Hello and welcome fifth grade friends and family of Woodrow Wilson. This is Miss Fields here and I am joining you for our seventh episode of Math Toolbox. So our focus for the past couple weeks has been being able to fluently multiply multi-digit numbers. And the focus of our instructional video tonight will be on how to use the box method to multiply multi-digit numbers. So typically our fifth graders will encounter multiplication problems in a word problem. However, just for the sake of breaking down this strategy, we're gonna use this multiplication expression of 47 times 92. Now in fifth grade, our scholars are gonna be expected to use two strategies when they are multiplying multi-digit numbers. And again, what I mean by multi-digit numbers means that there's more than one digit in both sides of the expression, for example, 47 and 92. Now, the reason why we expect our fifth graders to know more than one strategy of multiplication is for two reasons. The first is that our fifth graders can multiply using standard algorithm and box method in order to corroborate or to check that they got an accurate product. Our second reasoning for having our fifth graders be able to do two different strategies is to be able to think flexibly with our mathematical thinking. With standard algorithm, it's streamlined, it's quick, it, it makes multiplying super easy, it gets you a fast product, whereas our box method over here uses different mathematical principles such as distributive property, partial products, and then putting it all together to find the final product. So starting with our box method, this is going to be the focus of our video. I'm going to explain really quickly how we set up our box and what each number corresponds to. For example, on the outside, we've got 40 and 7 and 90 and 2. When our first, first graders first started learning about this, I'm sure that 40 and the 7, it was a little bit abstract as, where those, as to where those came from. So I'm going to draw some lines here. We've got our 4 connected to our 40 over here. Now the reason why this is a 40 is because this digit 4 is in the tens place. Now over here we've got the digit 7, and this is in the ones place. So when we set up our box, this is just a 7 over here. It's not 70, it's not 7,000, it is just a 7 because it's in the ones place. Moving over here to our 90 and our 2, the reason why we have 90 right here is because this digit 9 is connected to this 9 in the tens place. This digit 2 over here is currently placed in the ones place, and that gives us 90 and 2. Something that I really encourage our fifth graders to do to double check that they set up their box correctly is that they can simply add these two numbers together. 40 plus 7 is 47. Add the other number together. 90 plus 2 is 92 to make sure that they have accurate partial numbers over here, our tens and our ones. Now, this next step is crucial. So in my own class, I have taught our fifth graders how to draw lines to make sure that they are multiplying in a correct pattern. So over here, we've got our 90. And I recommend that our fifth graders draw arching lines from our 90 to our 40, all the way over from our 90 to our 7. We know that this top part, that's what we're doing for our multiplication. Down here for our 2, I recommend that our fifth graders in another color draw a line that connects from our 2 to our 40, or whatever number is in this current place, and our 2 to our 7. Now, for our fifth graders that struggle with organization, drawing these lines is huge because it helps provide a roadmap for where they need to be multiplying. It can get pretty jumbled up and pretty confusing once you start getting everything put in the box. Another thing that I recommend for fifth graders to do before they even start multiplying is adding in these zeros. I'm sure that you've noticed that there's just random zeros in this box, and I'm sure you're wondering where did they come from? So if we're looking at our lines here, we've got a, li a line connected from our 90 to our 40. What I recommend for our fifth graders to do is to count up their zeros and add them in before they try and find the product. So for example, with our 90 and our 40, count up how many zeros there are. One, two, 
we simply put the zeros in the box so that we can take them out of our multiplication expression and to simplify it. Moving over here, we've got 90 and 7. We see that there's one zero here, so we're going to put that in the box over on the right side. Moving down to our 2 times 40, we see that there's one zero there. We put it there as a placeholder. And last but not least, we've got 2 times 7. There are no zeros, so our box rem remains completely empty. Moving on to our multiplication. I always start with our arcing arrows over here at the top part when I multiply. So starting with our 90 times 40, our 90 times 7, I already added in our zeros, so I simply pretend like these zeros don't even exist, and I get a multiplication expression of 9 times 4, as well as 9 times 7. So let's see what that looks like. When I add that in, I know that 9 times 4 is 36, but when I put it all together, I see that the product is 3,600. Moving over here, I see that 9 times 7 is 63, add in that 0, and our product is 630. Now moving down here, we know that even though I don't have the lines, that we're going to multiply our 2 by our 40 and our 2 by our 7. However, our 0 is already here, so our multiplication expression is 2 times 4, which is 8. Add in that 0, the product is 80. And last but not least, 2 times 7, we know that's 14. Now this next step is absolutely key. What I recommend that our fifth graders do with their box is to extend the lines. And what we're gonna do by extending these lines is to keep our work organized and to keep our partial products in their own little area before we add them all together up here. So in extending those lines, I know that I'm gonna add together 3,600 plus 80. Notice, though, how I lined up all of my place values. My ones are next to my ones, my tens over my tens, hundreds over hundreds, thousands over thousands, and the same over here with our 630 plus 14. Ones place, tens place, hundreds place are perfectly aligned. My next step is I just simply add it all up. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus eight is eight. Six plus zero is six. Three plus zero is three. Our sum is 3,680. Moving over here, I do 0 plus 4 is 4, 3 plus 1 is 4, and 6 plus 0 is 6. Now, 3,680 and 644 are not our final product. These are simply partial products. In order to get our answer, we need to neatly and in an organized manner add these last two partial products together to get our final product. Again, simply lining up our place values, our ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands. Zero plus four is four. Eight plus four is 12. Put down the two in the ones place and carry that 10. Six plus six is 12, plus that carried 10 is 13. Put down the three, carry the one. 3 plus 1 is 4, and our final product is 4,324. Now, again, like I said before, in fifth grade, we highly emphasize being able to think flexibly with our math and also to check our answers. So even though I solved this product using the box method in a perfect mathematical perfect mathematical world, I would move over and I would do standard algorithm as well to corroborate my answer. And last but not least, something I highly recommend with our fifth graders is that they state their solution and they box their final answer so that it's easily found on the paper and that it's clear that they know what the product is. Thank you so much friends, family, and fifth graders of Woodrow Wilson Elementary for joining me tonight for another episode of Math Toolbox. I wanna to remind you guys how important the skill of being able to fluently multiply multi-digit numbers is. And even if you don't understand it now, continue to work and practice at it because it'll be something that we use for the rest of the year. Thank you so much for joining me and I can't wait to see you tomorrow morning. Have a great night.